The sternal angle is like X marks a spot on a treasure map. Remember reading about uh, Treasure Island as a kid and the pirates are coming close and like, ah, look at those two mountains. Read between them would be the treasure where the X marks the spot. That sounded like more like the pirate from SpongeBob, but anywho. All right, so there's that X marks a spot. You know what X marks a spot means? You will find what you're looking for under the X. And if you're a pirate, what's under the X? When you dig, treasure. Well, the sternal angle is like X marks a spot on a treasure map. Because on your patience, if you can find this sternal angle where X marks a spot, you're going to find all, you'll find what you're looking for under the X. And what are you looking for? Rat plant. That's what you're looking for, and that's the treasure. So, hello, my friends. This lecture is on the sternal angle, and we're going to answer the questions what is the sternal angle and what makes rat plant a treasure? My name is Dr. Morton, and I am the noted anatomist. So, first question what is the sternal angle? Well, the sternal angle is the junction between the manubrium in green, that bone, and the sternal body there in the rose color. And between these two elements of the sternum is this manubriosternal joint, this synovial joint. Uh, it, there's very little movement, though it's a synovial joint, and it makes an angle between these two bones that we simply call the sternal angle. Now let's take, you know, move this around so we can see a lateral view of it. And so the sternal angle is there, and it's approximately 163 degrees in its angu angulation. I think that's a word, isn't it? Um, and so this is more, it's not a huge angle, so it's not so much an angle you see as much as it is an angle that you feel or palpate. And so the sternal angle is also called the sternal angle of Louis or Louis, named after Anton Louis, the French surgeon who also invented the guillotine. As a matter of fact, it used to be called the Louisette, and then it was called the guillotine after Dr. Joseph Guillotine. And so what happened is Anton Louis and Joseph Guillotine had like a rock, paper, scissors war, and Anton Louis said, I got the sternal angle, and Joseph Guillotine says, I got that guillotine. And so I mention all that because the sternal angle of Louis or Louis is also known simply as the angle of Louis or Louis or simply the sternal angle. And so the sternal angle is where X marks the spot. And what's underneath that X marks the spot? Rat plant. That's what's under that X marks the spot. And rat plant is an, uh, uh, represents each letter, it, uh, represents now the following structures. Rib 2, the aortic arch, tracheal bifurcation, pulmonary trunk, ligamentum arteriosum, azagous vein, nerves, and the thoracic duct. And so Let's start with rib number two, the first one, R. And so here we've got rib number two in yellow. And if we find the sternal angle, that is how we find that second rib in the costal cartilage that articulates at that sternal angle. And then if you now go below the second rib, what you find is the second intercostal space. So what this means is you can find the second rib, you can find the second intercostal space, and hey, you can count intercostal spaces. So which begs the question, uh, why do we care about why do we care about intercostal spaces? And so the reason why we care about intercostal spaces, let's give an example. The pulmonic valve is auscultated in the second left intercostal space, like this. Shing. And now you can listen to this the best place to listen to the pulmonic valve. But that begs the question, Dr. Morton, how did you just find that? I'd say great question. So now let's superimpose this skeleton on there. And if you palpate the jugular notch on top of the manubrium, which then means you can find the manubrium, and if you find that junction between the manubrium and the sternal body, which we know is a sternal angle, guess what you find? Rib number two. If you find rib number two, you find shing, the second left intercostal space, and that's where you can listen to the pulmonic valve like that. So if we superimpose it on there, if you find that pulmonic valve, then you can also listen to the right second intercostal space where the aortic valve is best auscultated. And if you want to listen to the AV valves, you take the third, fourth, and fifth intercostal spaces, and then right adjacent the sternum in the left fifth intercostal space is the best place to listen to the tricuspid valve, and then the left fifth intercostal space in the midcavicular line is the best place to listen to the mitral valve. Basically, when all is said and done, that sternal angle and allows you to find that second rib and you can now count intercostal spaces to listen to heart valves. All right, so 
there at that level of the sternal angle is what something called the transverse thoracic plane or TTP. Now that transverse thoracic plane, what is it? Well, the transverse thoracic plane is the following. If you find the sternal angle in this lateral view, and then you take a line horizontal directly into the thoracic cavity, that's the transverse thoracic plane, or TTP. So here's a question. If that's a sternal angle, and that's rib two, and the transverse thoracic plane goes across, it hits the T4, T5 vertebra. So at the front, it articulates with the second rib, but in the back, it, are, it basically hits the T4, T5 junction. What is up with that? Well, to answer that, let's take a look at this lateral view. There's the sternal angle, and it articulates with that second rib, and the second rib articulates with the T2 vertebra. If we take that horizontal long question mark, why does it not hit the T2 vertebra? Because ribs course anteriorly at a downward angle, like a tall person hugging a short person as you get this idea of what the arms will do. And so what happens is if you now see highlighted in yellow that fourth rib, and there's that T4 vertebra, at the front, the second rib articulates the sternal angle. At the back, that transverse thoracic plane hits the T4. So a little tangent, but how does this downward direction of the ribs look in axial imaging? So if we now take uh, through that transverse thoracic plane a horizontal line, and now we take an axial CT through that same area, Let's see the following. The front rib is that rib, and then there's uh, the inferior rib and the next inferior rib. So you see three levels of ribs in, three, in the illustration and three levels of ribs in the axial CT, and that's why ribs look the way they do in axial imaging. Okay, aortic arch. Let's do that one next. So the aortic arch in this picture, it's a coronal section, and all we see highlighted is the aortic arch. It arises from where the aortic valve is right after the left ventricle, and it ascends up to around the T2 vertebral level, and then it descends back down to back to the T4 vertebral level. And so what we see is the aortic arch both begins and ends at that transverse thoracic plane. Next we have the tracheal bifurcation. And so the tracheal bifurcation, in purple we see the trachea, and so the trachea courses all the way down, and once it hits to that transverse thoracic plane, it's called the carina, this area where the bifurcation of the trachea occurs into both right and left primary bronchi. And so the bifurcation of the trachea at that transverse thoracic plane. Next is the pulmonary trunk, and we're going to see the pulmonary trunk goes from yellow and it's going to turn into blue because here we have that pulmonary trunk there in blue. It's carrying deoxygenated blood from the right side of the heart through those pulmonary arteries to the lungs, and the pulmonary arteries are going away from the heart to the lungs to become oxygenated, and that bifurcation of the pulmonary trunk occurs at the transverse thoracic plane. Next is the ligamentum arteriosum, and so the ligamentum arteriosum is the following. We see in this picture the aortic arch. We also see in this picture the pulmonary trunk, and where that bifurcation occurs in the top of the aortic arch, shing, we see this ligamentum arteriosum, and that arises at that level of the transverse thoracic plane. All right, let's look at a picture of fetal circulation from Gray's Anatomy here, and so there is that ligamentum arteriosum that connects the pulmonary trunk to the aortic arch. And so there we've got a bunch of red blood cells and when the, during systolic contraction in a fetus, the blood goes up, but we're gonna see that some blood goes to the lungs, but some other blood just bypasses the lungs and goes directly through that ductus arteriosus into the aortic arch. We bypass the lungs because they're not physiologically functioning gas exchange because mummy's doing that for baby. So, in a fetus, we call it the ductus arteriosus, but then in an adult, it becomes the ligamentum arteriosum because it basically um, becomes uh, just connective tissue. All right, A for azagous vein. So let's do the azagous vein next. You're going to see it turns blue again because look at the bottom of the screen and shing! There we have that azagous vein that ascends up collecting um, all the intercostal veins from the right side and then the hemiazagous and accessory hemiazagous dumping into it. And this azagous vein courses over that right primary bronchus and dumps into the superior vena cava. And where does this all occur? Approximately at that transverse thoracic plane level. All right. Now, N for nerves. So this is one, there's a few things going on here. And so we're going to talk about the vagus nerve first. And there's two branches of the vagus nerve in this transverse thoracic plane we're going to talk about. The first one is the left 
recurrent laryngeal nerve. And so there we've got descending in yellow is that left recurrent laryngeal nerve, and it wraps around the bottom of the aortic arch right by this ligamentum arteriosum just behind it, and then wraps around at that transverse thoracic plane level, and then ascends up right behind into the side of the trachea to innervate laryngeal muscles. And this is how problems in the aortic arch can actually cause paralysis or affect negatively uh, vocal uh, speaking, giving a hoarse voice. Um, all right, so now let's take a look at the vagus nerve again, except the second branch where the cardiac parasympathetic nerve fibers. And so there's the vagus nerve as it descends down. And then once we get close to the aortic arch, all those fibers, they look like little hairs that are going down to the aortic arch and they form, help contribute to this cardiopulmonary plexus. And these cardiopulmonary plexus, these superficial and deep, are we're giving autonomic innervation to the heart and lungs. And this vagus nerve is giving parasympathetics to that. Then the sympathetics, where are they coming from? Well, there's one sympathetic ganglion, and there's another sympathetic ganglion. And out of each ganglion, we have these cardiopulmonary splanchnic nerves. And these are sympathetic fibers that go from the ganglion to these cardiopulmonary plexuses, these autonomic uh, networks, superficially and deep, that will provide autonomic innervation to the heart and lungs. So the nerves, then, we're just going to scoot over so we see now at just that vagus nerve with its branches and the cardiopulmonary splanchnic nerves and their branches all occurring here at that transverse thoracic plane level. All right, finally, the thoracic duct or the thoracic lymphatic duct because this is the lymph vessel. It's arising from the cisternal chyli in the abdomen. Once it goes deep to the diaphragm, it courses up in the very back of the thoracic cavity and at the level of the transverse thoracic plane goes from the right to the left side of that vertebral body and ascends up and then eventually dumps into the left subclavian vein. And so the key to this is the thoracic duct courses from right to left at that transverse thoracic plane. So here we go, the sternal angle in a nutshell. Here we have a lateral view and X marks the spot and from that sternal angle we go in for this transverse thoracic plane and all the anatomical structures that occur are known as rat plant and there my friends is the sternal angle in a nutshell. Slow down, you move too fast. You gotta make the morning last. Just kicking down the cobblestone. Looking for fun and feeling groovy.